Yo, what is going on guys? Christopher Walken here, coming back at you with another video today doing the rebuild of the Detroit Lions, of course, in fantasy style. Anything goes to get the Detroit Lions back on the right track. Top three players, clearly, as you can see, Darius Slay, Glover Quinn, and Golden Tate, two of which I'm not particularly interested in having on the team for the long term. We'll get into that for a moment because you guys know by now the Madden regression system um, is friend to no one. When you get to 28, 29, 30 plus, things get really bad really quickly. We'll dissect the roster in a second, but uh, let's go ahead and get into this. All right, this is the squad we're rolling with. Marvin Jones is a great option. Eric Ebron is a very high rating for whatever reason. But then when you look at some of these other positions that are more questionable, Golden Tate for one is 29 years old. Regression will already hit him. Uh, in the offseason, so I might look to trade Golden Tate depending on what I can get back from him. Really want Kenny Galladay to play, so that'd be a good option there. At halfback, Theo Riddick is not my answer at all. And Matthew Stafford is another one that's pretty interesting. 29 years old, he's an 87. I don't think it would be possible for him to hit 90 overall. I'm not going to trade him the first season, definitely not. But if he doesn't progress to at least an 88, uh, at least, then we're definitely going to think about moving on. TJ Lang is someone that I think could be fine here, even though he is 29. He's an offensive lineman, so regression works a bit differently. He can't run block for anything, though. Rick Wagner is another guy um, that I think is probably going to be good to stay. And then Travis Swanson, Graham Glasgow, Taylor Decker, like all those guys, they're going to be good on the squad for a minute. Defensively, really love Jared Davis. Paul Warlow isn't my guy. To hear Whitehead can probably say Glover Quinn is what 30 31 uh yeah probably gonna have to trade him they'd go to New Mexico like uh Brian Erlacher so that's cool Tavon Wilson and Miles Killebrew aren't gonna be my starting safeties but at corner we do have a couple of interesting players here and Darius Slay Quandre Diggs took him horns and Jalen Tease Tabor what a guy he should have better coverages because Devin Lawson and DJ Hayden are absolute trash. Anthony Zettel has played so well. And then, of course, Ashawn Robinson. Akeem Spence is is fine, but I might probably play Cornelius Washington in there uh, and try to trade Haloti Nada, Akeem Spence, uh, and probably Ziggy Ansa, to be honest. Let's go ahead and see what we can do, though. With my first trade, I'm trading TJ Lang, Golden Tate, and a second round in extra for Kevin Byard of the Tennessee Titans. I don't really care to deal with the regression factors for Golden Tate, who will be like an 87, 86 overall uh, at the end of the season. Don't want to deal with that one bit. So he's being traded. Kevin Byard, really, really good young safety having a breakout year. Very comfortable with adding him to the team, and now that gives us uh, leeway to trade Glover Quinn. With this trade, trading Glover Quinn and Nick Ballore for the first overall projected pick from the Cleveland Browns, that pick will have a tremendous amount of value. I almost traded for Carson Wentz, but decided that that wouldn't be a fair rebuild video if I just went out and traded for a really good young quarterback. The video would be pretty much done. And I don't like trading for quarterbacks anyway, so didn't do that, but it could have happened. Just no, it could have been pulled off. With this trade, trading Haloti Nada and Mahalik for the 13th overall projected pick from the Cincinnati Bengals, another first rounder. And I think I'm pretty much done with trades. There aren't a tremendous amount of older players on this roster. And Ezekiel Ansa is 28. He will start to regress at the end of the season. Uh, but I don't want to trade him now. So we're just going to hold on to him for the moment. All right, I ended up trading Ziggy Ansa anyway. Um, this is actually a much better trade for us as I'm trading Nevin Lawson as well. Don't know why anyone would want him, but the Bucks did. And a third, or, or third rounder next year for Levante David. He's going to come in and play outside linebacker. He's going to fit the 4-3 really, really well, which means I can move Kerry Hyder Jr. back down to defensive end where he can play right end over Dwight Freeney. I'm also going to cut DJ Hayden. Just uh, don't care to have him on the team. I'd rather play Jalen Tabor and Jamal Agnew. All right, last trade of season one. Theo Riddick and a fourth for Sterling Shepard. I think someone that's going to compliment uh marvin jones really 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 well basically another golden tate except younger and a lot more potential certainly shepherd love him as a giants fan tremendous player he's gonna work super super well on the team and then if i can play what tj jones 
at wide receiver four and Kenny Galladay in the slot. Actually, Kenny Galladay at wide receiver number two, Sterling Shepard in the slot. Now we're cooking. I love it. So this is the full team. You guys have seen the defense and the offense. We're about ready to get into the simulation here. Um, why is Matthew Stafford not popping up? I can go put Matthew Stafford back at starting quarterback, and I will see you guys at the midseason mark. So at the midseason mark, we are 2-5. and five. Not exactly killing it. Obviously, the team has a long way to go. Tayer Whitehead is our top priority free agent, and I think I would like to bring him back. Kerry Hyder Jr. is also a free agent. Not quite sure about him. To hear Whitehead on a four-year deal, uh, got to hear Whitehead back. I'm a little bit uneasy about it because he's not amazing, but he's also like just good enough to where I'm comfortable offering him a deal. And I don't really like any of the remaining free agents, so I'm not going to deal with them at this time. TJ Jones isn't bad, but we're going to see how much XP he has at the end of the season and then make that decision. But uh, I guess I will see you guys for the playoffs, which we most likely won't make as we are third in the division. So we missed the playoffs, clearly finishing seven and nine. So fought back a little bit there to better our record as Matthew Stafford, 4,307 yards, 38 touchdowns, 16 picks, that's one per game. Rushing Amir Abdullah, decent season, 12 touchdowns for over a thousand yards. Didn't average four per carry though, which is what worries me. And a fumble the ball five times, receiving Marvin Jones, great season, as we have 10 or excuse me, three 10 touchdown receivers. Marvin Jones, Sterling Shepard, and Eric Ebron. Sterling Shepard almost had 1,000 yards. Marvin Jones with 1,200. That is really good for him. Blocking, offensive line held up okay, apart from Taylor Decker. As Jared Davis leads our team in tackles with 150. Tackles for loss would be nine from Anthony Zettel. QB sacks, six and a half for Ashawn Robinson, six for Kerry Hyder, five and a half for Anthony Zettel. Five picks for Kevin Byard, four for Levante David, three for Tease Tabor. Here we go, Jalen. Two for big play Slay. Force fumbles, it looks like four leads the team, three for Quandre Diggs as uh, Levante David had four. Two fumble recoveries from Levante David also led the team. And then defensive touchdowns, no one had any. Check out yearly awards. Tom Brady wins the MVP. Doubt we'll see any Lions. Matthew Stafford actually gets in there at number 10. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers. Matthew Stafford in there at number 9. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Cam Jordan. Jared Davis in there at number 9. I will hope he wins Defensive Rookie of the Year as Mitchell Trubisky. Trubisky wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Kenny Galladay in there at number 9. And Defensive Rookie of the Year, Jared Davis misses out by 1. It's Reuben Foster who gets it. Oh, that's so frustrating. Jalen Tease Tabor in there at number 8. Jared Davis led the NFL in tackles and still was not defensive rookie of the year over another middle linebacker. That is tough, but I'm not going to retain any of our free agents. We're just going to deal with that in actual free agency and the draft. Wow, okay. What? This is something you don't see every day. Le'Veon Bell is in free agency. This is definitely a potential landing spot for Le'Veon Bell. I am going after him with everything we have. All right, through the kitchen sink at Le'Veon Bell, and he accepts our deal. And he is the newest member of the Detroit Lions. Le'Veon Bell, welcome to Detroit. What a beast. This is actually kind of wild. Javante Atwater, a free safety who's 6'3". Steve Atwater was 6'3", went to Arkansas. Javante Atwater, 6'3", probably around the same dimensions. I just remember Steve Atwater, 6'3", went to Arkansas. Javante Atwater, Arkansas State. What are the odds? In the draft, we have the third overall pick as well as the 11th and 15th in the first round. That's all we have. Let's go ahead and simulate to the third overall pick. See what direction we might go with it. This might be the first and last time I ever do this, but Mustafa Allison out of Alabama. And granted, Alabama offensive linemen are great while they're at Alabama and then not so great in the NFL historically. But he looks amazing, super strong, amazing top three skills. I'm taking him here at number three. Mustafa Allison, wow, okay. He's ranked number two in the class. We drafted him at number three. Superstar development, 92 strength, 84 run block, 83 pass block, 87 impact blocking. Taking a lineman in the top three has worked out wonderfully. And now I think I'm going to go Jordan Harris at number 11. Strong safety, good zone. 
Good combine. Wish his hit power was better. But he looks to be a very good player. 92 speed, 82 zone, 78 hit power. Quick development out of AM. Looks to be a solid player, 77 overall. With this pick, I'm going Russ Gandy out of Florida. Another Florida cornerback to get and pair potentially with Jalen Tabor. Great top three skills. That's what I'm looking at here. Russ Gandy, 80 overall, ranked number seven in the class. We drafted him at 15. 88 speed, 83 man, 80 zone, 90 press. Not bad for a player. That's supposed to be a mid-second round pick. Now I'm taking Lawrence Sicko out of Auburn. Amazing combine, super strong, very quick. Good top three skills. Here he is, Sicko out of Auburn. Ranked number 17 in the class. We drafted him at 43, 90 strength, 76 run block, 82 pass block, 89 impact blocking. He's a 78 overall. Now I'm going to go Antonio Benson out of Delaware State. Six foot five, good top three skills, not the fastest. Not a combine warrior by any means, but I think he'll be a good pairing with the receivers we have now. Probably look to play him at wide receiver four or five. Um, so mainly a depth pick up here. And he's actually very good. Quick development, 77 overall. Ranked number 19 in the class. We took him at 75. 87 speed, 79 route running, 89 spectacular catch. Very solid player. We're going to go after offensive lineman again. This time with Graham Cesario out of Indiana State. Looks like a good player. 76 overall. Excellent pick. Ranked number 25 of the class. We took him at 107. 91 strength. 83 run block. 77 fast block. 82 impact blocking. Not bad. Now I have three picks remaining. I have three more players watched. I think I can get all of them. We're going to take another offensive lineman in DeJuan Brisby out of Butler. Good top three skills. You wish the pass block was higher, but very strong. Great at run blocking. Great impact blocking as well. 78 overall. Quick development. He's ranked number 14 in the class. We take him at 139, 87 strength, 88 run block, 86 impact blocking. We knew pass block would be bad at 74, but 53 awareness can be upgraded. That'll bring us overall quite a bit. And quick development. You can't teach development, so that is a huge thing for us. He'll probably end up starting because of that trade somewhere on the offensive line. And how could I resist a man-to-man -man corner with the last name Man? JT Man out of Marshall. Good top three skills. Fast, decently strong. Here he is. 71 overall. Uh, very solid pick for a seventh rounder. 92 speed, 84 man, 81 zone, 72 press. Again, play rex low. Awareness is going to be low. But we can upgrade those, and that's going to bring us overall quite a bit. I know he was, but we took him in the sixth, but he's supposed to go in the seventh. That's why I called him a seventh round guy. And if we could take an offensive lineman to wrap things up, I would be very, very happy here in the seventh. Tanner Spellman. Out of William and Mary, here he is. Wow, 77 overall, ranked number 23 in the class. We took him at 203. 91 strength, 81 run block, 76 pass block, 84 impact blocking. Good player. You look for a development trait, though. Didn't get it. But uh, we're going to have a lot of decisions to make with who starts on this offensive line. A lot of really talented rookies. See, this is my worry with Stafford, is that everything is so hard to upgrade now, which is really, really annoying because of his age and regression and things along those lines. But that's the offensive line. You can see a number of things, like Taylor Decker not starting. It's all right. Ricky Wagner is getting traded. I can guarantee you that much. The receiver situation is very interesting with Kenny Galladay and this, uh, this rookie. And that's Marvin Jones. I didn't mean to do that. This rookie that we drafted by the name of... Antonio Benson with quick development at 6'5". Now, he's not a slot receiver, so we might play him at the 2 and keep Sterling Shepard in the slot. I don't know. Could be an option. And then defensively, you see Levante David is playing right end. I don't know why the CPU think that's or thinks that's a good idea because he's not good at that position at all, even though he's listed as 90 for whatever reason. He's not. We need a right end because we don't have one. Levante David's playing outside linebacker. I'm not starting Joshua Perry at right outside linebacker. So I'm gonna trade Ricky Wagner in order to get a defensive end. With this trade, I'm trading Ricky Wagner, Graham Glasgow, and a first round pick for JV and Clowney. Gotta scheme this because I tried this trade when Ricky Wagner was listed as a right tackle and it did not go through, but their number one need was left tackle. So I changed his position to left tackle and the trade sure enough goes through. You gotta get creative sometimes in the way that you fuck the CPU. But this will be the team that we sent out there uh, to do our bidding. I think this is a team that can win games for sure. 
And, uh, I mean, we're just going to see. Levante David goes back to his rightful spot. Shadavian Clowney, I will list at right end. And he should start wreaking havoc on the defensive line. All right, midseason mark, year two. We are three and four. Not in an ideal spot after losing 31-28 to the Giants. Jadavian Clowney is a free agent. Who else is going to be there? Eric Ebron, Cornelius Washington isn't even particularly good. Ah, uh, I would have liked to trade him. Amir Abdullah, Quandre Diggs. I don't know what I want to do here. So Clowney and Ebron were no-brainers to bring back. Quandre Diggs, unfortunately, not so much. I just don't see him developing into anything crazy. We're probably going to have to say goodbye to Quandre Diggs. Amir Abdullah is a good backup. Want him back. And Cornelius Washington... He just really doesn't have any redeeming qualities about him other than 86 speed, uh, which is pretty ridiculous for defensive tackle, which I moved him there. He was originally like a 3-4 outside linebacker with the Bears. I guess he ended up in Detroit. And he's like kind of whatever. He just doesn't work at defensive tackle for me, so I have to move on from him. All right, so we missed out on the playoffs in year two. Surprise, surprise. Finishing once again 7-9 as the Vikings went 14-2, taking over the NFC North. Matthew Stafford, disappointing season, 4,200 yards, 30 touchdowns, 18 picks. Rushing Le'Veon Bell, carried, no pun intended, 1,300 yards, 15 touchdowns, average 5 per carry. Sterling Shepard led our team in catches. However, yards uh, went to uh, Kenny, Gall Kenny Galladay, Jesus, and Marvin Jones. Both had over 1,000. Kenny Galladay also had eight touchdowns. Blocking. A lot of rookies out there. A lot of sacks allowed. As Levante David leads our team in tackles with 160, 142 from Jared Davis. Tackles for loss, 11 from Clowney, 10 from Ashawn Robinson. Quarterback sacks, 9.5 from Clowney, 9 from Ashawn Robinson. Led the team. Interception, 7. From Big Play Slay, five from Levante David, five from Russ Gandy out of Florida. I like to see it. Two from Quandre Diggs, two for rookie safety Jordan Harris, one for Kevin Byard. Force fumbles, we have three from Zettel, two from Davis and Whitehead. D Davis, David, am I retarded? No, I'm not retarded. Wait, what do I, what do I, Down Syndrome? And one touchdown from Darius Slay. Yearly awards, Deshaun Watson wins MVP of the 15 and one Houston Texans. Any Lions? Surprise, surprise. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers. Le'Veon Bell in there at number two. No Lions. Defense Player of the Year, Everson Griffin. Levante David in there at number two. I said, I meant to say Le'Veon Bell if I said Levante David there. I might actually have a disorder. Offensive Rookie of the Year, AJ Foster. Antonio Benson in there at number three. He probably could have won it if I started him. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Russ Gandy, the cornerback. I honestly would have preferred if Jordan Harris got it. He's in there at number two, though. That hopefully is a good amount of XP as we can take some positives away from this poor season. This is honestly such a joke, and it happens, like, every time. But when he doesn't have... And he did have a pick on the year. Is it not registering as he had a pick? He gets slow development every single time. It's so frustrating. Like, that's so stupid. Uh, all right, well... Off-season time, we don't even have any draft picks because I trade a lot of them away. But I think now we're into the development phase. Wish I had a quarterback because Matthew Stafford, like, he's not the guy that's going to do it for us. That's the reality, unfortunately. Dang, there's some high-quality free agents that are just, you know, available um, recently. With Le'Veon Bell last year, now Casey Hayward. He is 29, but he is 6, so it doesn't matter. Could be a player we target. We have the money to get him. All right, so Casey Hayward accepts. He is the newest member of the Detroit Lions, adding a really, really nice cornerback trio with he, big play Slay, and Russell Gandy, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Got some good things going. Just uh, looking to further improve, as I think we're going to be able to. As uh, I don't know why you're playing with, with bad confidence. Looks like you had a pretty good season. Do you guys just love regression on your quarterback? Fantastic. I really don't think Stafford is the answer at QB. I mean, we might have to trade him. I think we might have to at this point. Not a whole lot of other options. 
We're in the NFL draft. We're going to pause it. We don't have any picks up until the sixth round, I believe. Might try and move up for a quarterback because Matthew Stafford is not the guy, I'm telling you. And now I finally know this. I should. I knew it at the start, too, and I went with him anyway. All right, Matthew Stafford, a five, and Akeem Spence for the number one overall pick from the Jets, which I will trade down because that's what I do with the Ravens. Now it is a one, a two, and a future one for the first overall pick from Baltimore. I'm out here scheming all the time, and I'm going to trade down even further with the Cardinals now, and then probably make my pick at number three, I'd say. A one, a three, and a future one as we trade down from the number two overall pick. And um, hopefully we take a really sick Q uh, QB. Kent was not my guy, so. Now trading the number three overall pick down to number 12 and picking up a 32nd in the process. 32nd overall, I should say. So uh, Texans go ahead and take themselves a right end. And now I'm going to take my quarterback. Not terribly confident in this pick, but it's going to be Alexander Cologne out of Wisconsin. He looks okay, but he's very fast. He has throw power. He's a, devel a developmental guy. Here he is. 76 overall quick development. I'll take it. 86 speed, 92 throw power. Very solid player. And um, hopefully he has a really sick rookie season. We have the protection for him. We have Le'Veon Bell. We have the receiving targets. So uh, now we look to upgrade at defensive tackle. We need an upgrade. And um, where else do I need? I don't know. All right, finally got this to go through. I had to move Graham Cesario over to left guard. But Cesario, a first and a second for Aaron Donald. That more than solves our defensive tackle issue. And, uh, I mean, we we got things going now. We're in business. All right, major trade going through. Bringing in the former defensive rookie of the year over Jared Davis and Reuben Foster to replace Tahir Whitehead, who is regressing a three this year and a next year's second round pick in order to get him. He will fit in really nicely. I think I'm going to play him at middle linebacker and move Jared Davis over to left outside linebacker. I think that'll probably work for the best. And our draft is over. So I will see you guys for the start of season number three. All right, this is the team for season three. We're starting Benson at wide receiver two. I think that's the best move for us, especially with his quick development. That's definitely the move. We have a solid team. It's all about taking it up to the next level now. Uh, defense is looking really, really nice, especially with the addition of Aaron Donald. I wanted him for, since year one. Corners are really, really awesome. I like the secondary. Linebackers are obviously sick. Offensively, I know what you're thinking, though. It's like, why would you go from having Matthew Stafford an 88, well, then down to an 87 overall, for a rookie out of Wisconsin that's a 76 overall? Well, the quick developments can help us out a lot, but it's all about development. Stafford was only going to keep going down. Cologne can actually go up, which is something that we had never had with Stafford. So where at the end of this season, Matthew Stafford might be an 85, Cologne could be going up to an 85. See what I mean? So when we do year number four, which is going to be next, we actually have a way better quarterback than Matthew Stafford ever could have been. So without further ado, I'm going to simulate to the regular season and then probably sign a backup quarterback. I just want... Cologne to get all the preseason reps, then I'll sign a backup, and then I'll advance the midseason mark. So I will see you guys there. So now with our rookie QB at the midseason mark, we are six and two, leading the division as we again lose to the Giants by three. What is going on with that? Um, but we got off to a red hot start. We lost to the Vikings division matchup, and then we just fucking went off before losing to the Giants. But we're in the driver's seat with this rookie QB having a better record at the midseason mark than we ever had with Matthew Stafford. So we're killing it. Kevin Byard's a free agent. We're going to bring him back despite his slow development now, which again is ridiculous. Anthony Zettel is also a free agent. But uh, yeah, look how amazing Kevin Byard is. All right, so we brought back Sean Robinson, Taylor Decker, Sterling Shepard, Anthony Zettel, and Kevin Byard. We had a really good group of guys coming back. We are 6-2. and two. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade our players now so we can power through the playoffs, get Rookie of the Year for Alexander Colon, and see you guys for the playoffs. We're making it this time. All right, first round bye it is. We went 14-2 and two with a Rookie QB. Unbelievable. Alexander Colon, what'd you do? Ah, you actually didn't play that well. <laughs> 3,875 yards, 33 touchdowns, 21 picks. Rushing, that's the guy. It's Le'Veon Bell. 
almost 2,000 rushing yards, 19 touchdowns, averaging 6 yards per carry. Receiving Marvin Jones, led our team in catches and yards and touchdowns. Um, yeah, I mean, we were a run-first team, clearly, as our offensive line only gave up 6 sacks. Ruben Foster, led our team in tackles with 111. 100 for uh, Levante David. Tackles for loss. We have 12 from Aaron Donald, 9 from Jadavion Clowney. Sacks, 15.5 from Clowney, 14.5 from Zettel, 9.5 for Ashawn Robinson, and 7.5 for Aaron Donald. Interceptions, 8 from Casey Hayward, 4 for Ruben Foster, 4 for Bayard, 3 for Jordan Harris, 3 for Gandy. Only 2 for Darius, a big play slay. 2 forced fumbles and 2 recoveries for Bayard. He's still going to have slow development though, watch. There it is, slow development. Two for Aaron Donald in terms of forced fumbles, one recovery, and then two defensive touchdowns for Casey Hayward. That's got to be, what, two pick sixes as we were first in total offensive yards, even with our quarterback play, and then third uh, for defense. Le'Veon Bell wins MVP. You'd hope that he would with that sixth season as Cologne finishes in fourth. That's got to be rookie of the year. Coach of the year goes to me. NFC Office Player of the Year is also Le'Veon Bell. Alexander Cologne slips to nine. Defense Player of the Year, Zettel at three, Clowney at five, Foster at seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year, it's Alexander Cologne. Dwight Young, our fullback, at nine. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year, Anton Payne. No Lions in there. I don't even think we drafted any. Who are we playing in the divisional? The 11 and five Atlanta Falcons. Decent amount of XP for a number of players on this team. Looks like a lot of our offensive linemen. You have no XP. How come you don't have any XP? Why are you starting? Did Brisby supposed to be our right guard? Why is he not at right guard? Why did Sicko change? Why is Sicko... Oh, he's playing left guard? Who is my left guard supposed to be? Hold on. Did I have someone else supposed to play left guard? I guess not. I don't know why they switched. All right, this is the upgraded team. Cologne is up to an 87 overall with confidence, which is... The same overall Matthew Stafford was, and he would not have been anymore. Let's actually check in on Matthew Stafford. Let's find out where he is in the league. Traded him somewhere. Can't remember where. So Stafford with the Jets is an 87 overall. So he's staying at the same overall um, because his regression hasn't hit yet because it's not the end of the season. But uh, yeah, I think we definitely made the right move. Divisional playoff round, year three, to beat the Falcons to advance the conference championship, and we lose... Oh, what a heartbreaker. All right. Year four, a lot of confidence. All the confidence in the world that this team can advance and win a Super Bowl. I think it's going to happen. I don't even know where we can improve in free agency, but if there's someone available that I really want, uh, not going to be Carson Wentz. Yannick Ngakwe is super, super interesting over Anthony Zettel. Um, but I'm not going to do that because... Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to offer him a deal. All right, we got Yannick Ngakwe. He looked too ridiculous to pass up. Check out Yannick Ngakwe here. 99 finesse moves with 81 speed. All we have to do is upgrade block shedding, and he'll be an absolute beast. And I could potentially move Anthony Zettel inside the defensive tackle and then trade Ashawn Robinson for something. Because Anthony Zettel, like, he would fit this scheme, this 4-3 system, as a defensive tackle fairly well. And he is an 84 overall there. I'd be comfortable playing him inside. What I really could use, though, is, uh, I think, a wide receiver. Because, I mean, like, Marvin Jones is playing up with a lot of confidence. But, I mean, he's progressed a lot. He's 30 years old. He's an 85 overall. Sterling Shepard's doing great. Benson's doing well. We got Kenny Galladay. But if we can move Marvin Jones down in the rotation, trade Kenny Galladay, and pick up a beast wide receiver with like a first round pick or something, we would be in business. All right, here we are in the draft. We have the third overall pick because of a trade that we made. And um, I think we're gonna we're gonna make the most of this. And we are gonna trade Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay and two first round picks secures Michael Thomas of the New Orleans Saints. He is of course the newest member of the Detroit Lions. And we are essentially done here um, as we picked up a stud wide receiver. I have another first round pick, all right. I traded a first and a third for Ryan Ramchek. I did that very quickly. I'm going to play him at guard. The draft is over for us. And uh, we just got a sick player. The team looks unbelievable. Big thanks for year number four. I expect a Super Bowl championship. All right, this is the team. 
It looks very, very good. Only thing now we can do is simulate and hope for the best. We're in business though. I think we're in a great situation. Anthony Zettel's just gonna hang out there uh, and be good depth as the third defensive tackle. And uh, I will see you guys for the playoffs. Simulating straight there. All right, it is another first round by finishing 13 and three. As we check out the stats, 4,199 yards for Alexander Cologne, 50 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, great season. As uh, Le'Veon Bell has another six season, almost 1,800 yards, 12 touchdowns. Amir Abdullah had 15. Fear Amir, 11 touchdowns for Sterling Shepard, 13 for Eric Ebron, 7 for Michael Roberts, a backup tight end. Jesus. <laughs> seven touchdowns on 17 catches. That's unruly. Ridiculous. Sacks, our offensive line held together pretty well. Ruben Foster leads our team in tackles with 119. Tackles for loss, 25 from AD. Sacks, 15 from Yannick Ngakwe, 9.5 from Jadavion Clowney, 9 from Aaron Donald. Interceptions, 7 from Darius Slay, 6 from Casey Edward, 4 Levante David. Number of players had a number of interceptions. Kevin Byard had 0. <laughs> Unreal. Force fumbles. We have two from Jordan Harris, Yannick Ngakwe, and Aaron Donald. Safeties, I see Aaron Donald had one. And then defensive touchdowns, no one, really. Awards, how'd we do? Deshaun Watson gets MVP. Alexander Colon at number two. Le'Veon Bell at number eight. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers over Alexander Colon. I don't know how that works. Le'Veon Bell at four. No other Lions, clearly. Defensive Player of the Year, Bobby Wagner, B. Wags. Ruben Foster at six. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Randall Johnston of the Cowboys. Won't be any Lions in here. We have a ton of XP for a number of our players. We're going to advance, though, to the divisional round of the playoffs and face the 10-6 and 6 Rams without Aaron Donald. We're going to upgrade, and we're going to come out here with an insane team, and uh, they should not be able to compete. All right, this is the team for the playoffs. It looks absolutely insane. This is such a good team. The offensive line is maybe the best I've ever had. It's right up there for sure. Receiving core is nice. The backfield is awesome with Le'Veon, Alexander Cologne, and Young. Defensively, secondary is quite solid. Defensive line is very good. And the linebacking core is also quite solid. This is the team to do it. First of all, we have to beat the Rams in the divisional to move on to the conference championship. And we do. Now the 12 and 4 Seahawks. Let's see, do we have any XP? Nothing really. All right. To advance to the Super Bowl, we need to beat the Seahawks. Please. And we don't. Ah. Well, how did it end up going? I expected a Super Bowl, man. And it just did not happen. What happened to the conference championship? We lost by 12 points. And uh, it looks like the Seahawks just controlled the game the entire time, unfortunately. Uh, Cologne, two picks in the postseason. I mean, that's not going to cut. It was sacked twice. Rushing. Anyone fumble? No, of course not. But, um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Bad loss. And um, that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Regardless, we made it to the conference championship. Um, just couldn't make the big one. But uh, we'll revisit it eventually. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. What a beast.